Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hammer Podcast. Before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button to help grow this channel. It is greatly appreciated. Today is May 23rd, 2020, and we are talking with Janine Miller. Janine Miller attended the Victory Christian Academy in Ramona, California in the late 80s. She is also the author of the book, Pieces of Victory. The link will be in the description below. Now, in today's podcast, we will not only be talking about her time there at Victory, we will also be talking about some of the inhuman monsters that ran these homes, plus her journey to raise awareness about the abuse in these Christian reformatories, which is still going on, by the way. So, without further delay, let's talk with Janine. I was doing some research on, I'm not really familiar with uh, this particular home. I've been doing some research on it. Um, but was it uh, affiliated with... It's the same as McKenzie. It's the same as McKenzie. Right, right. Well, was it affiliated with it's Lester Victor Roloff, Christian. too? Yes. It was. It was a Lester Roloff program. Yeah. And, again, his history is 1968 with the Rebecca Home for Girls. Right. And it all, it's all interconnected. And this is very important because the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch in Missouri is still abusing girls as we speak. Um, so this is very important to know, to listen to my story, because whatever was go- is going on in my pro- program, whatever was going on with the program that I was locked in uh-huh. is going on with the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch. They're pretty much the same. They're sister programs. Right. There's a lot of, so, sis- there's a lot of sister programs out there. There's the Bethesda. Uh, that was, um, I did a few uh, podcasts with those ladies. And... Um, I, I, to give you a little background about me, I was, I was not in the home. I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I went to the Roloff Christian School. Okay, and this school was behind the Rebecca home. And, um, oh my God. Yes. So I, I'm very, very familiar with Lester Roloff. <laughs> oh no! Yes, I, I mean That's I was, so, I was, I was beaten. I was paddled. You know, uh, some oh of the God. stuff, some of the stuff that you girls went through, I did not go through. Um, you know, we weren't locked up. We weren't, uh, you know, forced to eat our own vomit. We weren't. It was none of that. Uh, the girls, the homes had it worse than the than the school. So, but. Wow, and um, this was a school that you can come home to. Right, right. We went. They, they, we, uh, we got on a bus. They took us to school, and then we came home. Yes. Oh, did you tell your parents what was going on, or were they part of the cult? I, I had no idea what was going on. That's the thing. I had no idea. Oh. Yes. Um, uh, according to the Rebecca girls, they, you know, they were sworn to secrecy. None of them said anything. It, it was just, it was brainwashing right. going on. You know what I mean? They I was were, referring to the paddling. I was referring oh, to the Oh, they knew about that. You know, they, they knew about that right. stuff. They knew about it. Um, but it wasn't to the point, like a lot of the girls, it wasn't to the point where they were bleeding and stuff like that. You know, But we did have our share of weirdos there. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. And, it, and it's, it really turned me off to religion. I mean... It wasn't really my mom's idea. It was my dad's idea because my dad was a, um, a a disciple, so to speak, of of Lester Roloff. He really, really enjoyed Lester oh, no. Roloff. So, oh, that's yeah. not good. So I can only imagine what your home life was like. My Maybe home you, life. I can interview you on my show. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead with your home. I, I'm so used to interviewing. Right. Well, the home life was was okay. I mean, we we had our you know we. We weren't, uh, you know, um, in, in versed in, in Bibles or anything like that. But we we got our share of, of discipline. You know what I mean? It was. I can was, imagine. How could you escape it being yes. connected to that? Right. So mastermind. Um, um, I had um, I had another podcast that I did. It was called Two Guys and a Mic, and I was with another guy, and I had been reaching out to some of these Rebecca girls. Because I'd, I'd been browsing the internet, and uh, I came across a, a forum about the Rebecca home, and these girls were talking about their life there. And I 
was basically like, wow, I mean, you know, and I looked on YouTube, I looked everywhere, I couldn't find anything else on it. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe we, this is something we could, we could talk about. And um, I put out some, uh, some ads out there and nothing happened. And then two years later, after the two guys in a mic podcast had already dissolved, um, a girl named Deanne Dossey uh, called me up. She was from the Rebecca home. And she wanted to be on the podcast. Well, oh wow! The podcast was already it had been gone for almost two years, and I said, "Well, I guess it's time to start up another podcast." So I started up with <laughs> with Deanne, and then with Deanne came oh. some of the girls from Bethesda, and it just spiraled from there. So and I mean, it's wow. good because a lot of there's there's no there's a couple of 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 videos out there like with you with the Victory Christian Academy. And there's some, actually, I, I was listening to one today with um, uh, uh, Circle of Miranda, Hope. Miranda? Cir- co- no, it was Circle of Hope Girls Ranch. Um, right, Amanda. How yes, older? yes. Yes, and, I uh, interviewed her too. I was, I was listening to, to, the, to the podcast, and um, there, was, there was, was nothing about the Rebecca home or the Bethesda home, you know. So, I mean, there, there's so many, so many, uh, it is. uh, girls homes out there, even boys homes, the lighthouse, the, I mean, a lot exactly. of, and, and the problem is a lot of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but most of them are affiliated with Lester Roloff. He is the, the prime cancer. I, I, I like to call it a cancer because I mean, this guy has, it is a cancer. he's, he's been dead f- since 82 and these sycophants have been carrying on his ministry as I far agree. as the it's Rebecca Holmes. Bethany, Rebecca Holmes, Circle of Hope is a Lester Roloff program, like you said. Uh-huh. And the Hefts of the House, which yes. finally closed down after five decades. It took them five decades to close down an abusive facility. Um, it's horrifying to know that these places are allowed to stay open in the United States of America. And I know the answer. It's a money-making propaganda. Oh. It's a billion-dollar industry. The, 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 it's a money-making machine. The churches are money-making machines. I mean, where else can you go and, and people are going to give you 10%? <laughs> Of their, of their earnings. <laughs> I mean, there's nowhere else. So, I mean. I agree. I, it, and that is the main problem, I feel. You can't abuse your child in the privacy of your own home. You'll be on the news. But by golly, you can pay someone and send your child away, and those programs could abuse children. And there could be numerous reports up the wazoo. And no one does anything. Right. No one is doing anything. I feel like America is just turning a blind eye. It's going viral. So we are making headway on it. Right. But it, it is. It, they are turning a blind eye. And I think it's because they call themselves Christian. Oh, well, it's a exactly. Christian. It's a Christian home. How could it be bad? Believe me, a lot. And of, I always. So some of the sickest people I've ever seen or have heard of have come out of churches, whether it's pedophiles, um, you know, people who uh, scam you, it's, it's all coming from the churches. And, and people don't want to hear it's, that because they figure that the church feel, is an is a institution faith, that's faith. supposed to right. be Christ-like, and it's not. Right. And a lot of people are, are just naive to think, oh, well, it's Christian. It's a Christian boarding school. And, you know, at one point I thought, you know, naively at 16 and thought, you know, I love my Christian school. I love my congregation. I just never thought there would be a place like this in a million years. I never thought. And um, just because someone slaps on Christianity doesn't make it so. And we are shedding light on the subject matter that just to be aware, you know, you can believe what you want to believe, but just be cautious and look for the red flags, you know, where you send your, your children. Oh, definitely. Or work it out. Work it out at home. You know, there are different alternatives. 
and it's a whole family dynamic. It shouldn't be singling out one child. It's really a family. You know, it should be treated as a, a whole instead of separating the child. Right. And, and, and the thing is, a lot of these Christian, Christian churches, I guess, it's more so the Baptists. It's not really the Methodists or the Presbyterians. It's more of the Baptists, especially the fundamental Baptists. They're always saying how you know, the mother should be at home. If the mother's at home, then she should be taking care of the children. I don't know why they're sending. I, well, maybe it's because they don't want to send them to a public school because public schools are evil. You know, so maybe that's what it is. And a lot of times they'll send them to these reform schools, conversion therapies. Now, conversion therapies, James Swift was locked into a conversion therapy because his parents couldn't accept the fact that he's gay. And they sent him there and they tortured the hell out of him. They were torturing the hell out of him at home. And it was orchestrated by their pastor. And then the pastor suggested the conversion therapy and their breeding grounds for raping the boys in there. Oh, yes. Yes. And that's exactly what happened to him. I I don't know if you've seen that interview or not. No, I haven't. Um, He's on The Haunted season two. Okay. Yeah, I have to look look at that. We Um, both are. Oh, okay. I will. Is it on YouTube? Um, it's not on YouTube. I haven't seen it, but if you can find it, send it to me so I can put it on his website. Uh-huh. I, I've been searching for it, but I've just been so busy lately that I haven't seen it. But if you get on Netflix, uh-huh. season two, Haunt, Haunted, third one down, it's called Cult of Torture. And that's what they are. They're cults. Okay. And I'm a survivor of a cult. Mackenzie is a survivor of a cult. Yes. Circle of Hope is a cult. These Rebecca home for girls. That's definitely a cult. No, no. One thing about Lester Roloff that I remember, he was, he was very adamant about condemning homosexuality, um, because I remember back in the day they made us listen to his sermons all the time, and it was like oh, na- no. nails on the chalkboard. Um, but he was always talking about the end time sin, homosexuality. It's it's a sin. It's 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 reprehensible. It's it's of the devil. But yet, um, I talked to a lady who didn't want to be uh, interviewed. She was very 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 scared. Um, but she was saying that there was rape going on in the lighthouse for men at the Rebecca home and. and I mean, I can't confirm that. Which is that. such a contradiction. To, right. Um, if you think that these boys are an abomination to God, why are you raping them? Right, right. Uh, it's you like, have it's... to be homosexual to do... I, you know, obviously it's about control. Rape is about control. Yes. But you're definitely not heterosexual if you're raping them. It, I mean, it, it's crazy. It seems like the people that are talking about it the most or condemning it the most... Are usually the ones that are doing it. Take Ted Haggard, for instance. He was always talking about homosexuality and how wrong it is and how it's a sin. But yet they found him with a, a gay hooker and with meth. <laughs> so wow. you know, I mean, like I said, Lester Roloff. I don't know much about his personal life. He, you know, he never never made that public. Um, but one thing I can say about Lester Roloff is he believed what he said. Um, you know, uh, as far as health, as far as living, what he said, he lived it. You know what I mean? He was a true, right. true believer. Um, his wow. his uh, minions, uh, Wiley Cameron, uh, I think his name is Charles Crummy. I know his last name is Crummy. When they took over the homes when Lester Roloff died, it, it was a whole different story. So, oh, no. Yes. That's awful. I mean, what he did to the girls was awful because he was beating them. Um, it's awful. There right. are newspaper articles about him. But, yeah. um, you know, they took it a step further. And these are breeding grounds for rape. They're breeding grounds for hitting girls, beating girls, starvation. Um, the state is not overseeing any of it. 
And I understand religious liberties. I get it. Mm -hmm. But not when it comes to abusing our children. I say this time and time again on every interview. You know, uh, when it comes to abusing our children, the government needs to come in. We need to step in and, and do something and save these children. It's, it's criminal what they're getting away with. The problem is uh, when, when the government, the state government shuts them down, they just move to another state. Exactly. <laughs> so Exactly. And Victory Christian Academy is the perfect example of that. The question is, you know, will we ever be able to shut these places down? Right. The only and way, one, the, the one only, state might be different than the other. Right, right. You know. With, with their legalities, and I'll give an example. In California, the preacher from a darker dimension had to shut his down because he was unlicensed. It's either get a license or get out, so he right. chose to get out, and he wasn't meeting up to fire code standards. But there were numerous police reports on child abuse. That was just put by the wayside, and he moved his facility to Mexico, and to Florida and rebranded it to Mexico, calling it Genesis by the Sea. Yeah. And then victory turned into the lighthouse. But the laws are different in Florida. You can have unlicensed facilities in Florida. Yeah. And the thing is, yes, I did know that. And, of course, you know, Rebecca Holm, they had this big fight about about, um, the licensing they had to shut down. Uh, Deanne Dossie was actually the one that shut it down. She she sued them, and they were. They oh wow! Were, yes, if you if you listen to uh, Deanne Dossie's uh, pod uh, on, the, on my podcast, she she tells you about it. But what happened was they moved from Texas to uh, Arizona, and then they got shut down there, and then they moved from Arizona to Florida, and oh my they beca- God. and they became awful. They became new beginnings. Uh, girls home so that's awful yes so the only way you're ever going to be able to stop these people is to uh, uh, install some sort of legislation for all states I mean there's but can you do that I don't I don't think you can every state has their own legislation we tried to pass a federal bill so it was introduced by George Miller in California Uh uh-huh in 2010, and then it was reintroduced by Adam Schiff. Now, personally, I feel it's dead in the water. So it passes in the House, and it stops in the Senate, and it did that twice. And now I feel that nothing is happening. I urge people to get a hold of their congressman and also Adam Schiff. Who's, who's, Adam, who's Adam Schiff? Is he a congressman? Uh, and for, he's congressman in California. Okay, for California. Okay, okay. George um, Miller introduced it, and then George Miller retired. And Adam Schiff had a federal bill called Stop Child Abuse in Residential Programs Teens Act. Okay. And it was reintroduced, and now nothing is happening. So maybe with all of these podcasts with all of these TV shows on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they will go viral and we will just make some noise to get um, Adam Schiff to reintroduce it. So I urge you to, to contact Adam Schiff. It it seems to be stirring our podcast. (laughs) It it seems to be stirring the pot just a little bit because we got people who, (laughs) who've been commenting on the, on the podcasts. Um, So awesome. Yes. Oh, well, it's 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 on on the podcast with uh, Mackenzie. Um, there've been people saying that you know that didn't happen. People have been trying to protect these homes. So exactly. That's I mean, people are listening. So that, that's a start. So right. Even if it's negative <laughs> yes. comments, we we had some negative comments about pieces of victory on my show. Uh huh. And I thought, okay, I'm not, I I ended up blocking her, but I thought to myself, well, this is good because I just talked about brainwashing on my show. And this is a perfect example of brainwashing. Right. These girls are so brainwashed to think, and staff too, that this is the right thing to do, that that, um, 
this is a way that they found God. They cleaned up their act, and it was the best thing that ever happened to them. And everything that you're saying is a lie. How right. could you be in a program and not know what was going on? <laughs> it's just brain. It's brainwashing, and um, a lot of it is Stockholm syndrome. Yes, they're protecting their abuser, and that goes on. And it's a. It's not the factor of why these places are still open today, but it's one of the factors of why these places are open today because they're the, they're the perfect marketing ploy. You know, they are, they are spreading the word that this place is good and telling other parents that this changed my life and why don't you send your child to this place? And the thing so is, they're pitching it. When, you, when, you, when you go to their websites... They're not going to uh, have on the bottom, you know, here, click here for the negative comments or the negative reviews. Right. Oh, by the way, I'm an abuser. Right. So but, when you when, send your daughter here. When, when you go They're to their websites, it's all positive. It's all sure. wonderful. Everything's great. We love Jesus. Jesus is here. We're going to help your daughters get closer to God. And it's the exact opposite. So I think par parents today really have no excuse because there is so much information out there all you have to do is go to the website you see something nice go to the forums you know go into google and click in negative comments about this whatever school and you're going to find them right you're going to find them exactly so it's all about doing your research doing your due diligence and making sure that this place that you are sending your daughter or son is uh, not going to be a place where they're going to be abused. Right. And then again, I always emphasize the alternatives. There are other alternatives. You know, even if you have a 1% chance that your child is going to be abused, especially if you can't see your child for three months at a time, or if you can't just drop on the property right. on a whim, that's a problem. That's a red flag. Or when things are crossed out and censored, those are all red flags, and parents need to be aware of that. I think the best solution is if parents stop feeding these, and I say feeding because they cost thousands and thousands of dollars to send your child there. Mm -hmm. If they start stop sending their child there, well, they'll go belly up. And the thing <laughs> is... You don't have a business. I, a business. Right. Because that's what it is. I went to... Uh, the website for the roll-off. The roll-off homes are still around. Uh, there's only, I don't, I don't know if the one in Florida, the Rebecca home in Florida is still around. I'm not sure. But I know that they do have two homes open. The, um, it's, it's called the roll-off men's home and the Jubilee home. Now, oh they, my God. they are, this is, this is the weird part. They're, they're only accepting people 18 and above. Okay. Wow. So now, if you, if you do it that way, you can kind of get away from the whole child abuse thing. And I think they're trying to keep a lower profile. But I went to there oh and, I, and, and I downloaded the, the application. Okay. And it talks about what's going to be done when you get there or whatever. And, and Lester Roloff used to say in his sermons, we offer, we, we charge, we don't charge anybody. Okay, it's offered free of charge to bring these girls into the home. Now they're saying you need to pay a certain amount, five or six hundred dollars. You can't have any money with you. Now, if you decide to leave the program, all that money that you have accrued in their in their account is going to be nullified. It's theirs. They're going to consider it a wow. gift. Now instead of raping these girls and boys they're raping them financially <laughs> wow that's terrible yes and who knows what kind of abuse is going on right there but the thing is you can leave if you want to that's that's the whole thing you can leave if if, if you don't feel like it's the place for you you can leave they're not gonna oh, wow. they'll, they'll, they'll take you to the bus station but they're not gonna provide you with transportation home but they will keep your money so in other words Today, I think they, a lot of these places have learned their lesson. Okay, let's not deal with uh, uh, children. Let's deal with adults. So now it's basically, like like I said before, it's a money making machine. Let's get as much money as we can. Let's treat them 
like shit, excuse me, and when they leave, will keep their money. Wow. That's terrible. And yeah. let me just remind you that Circle of Hope Girls Ranch in Missouri is a Lester Holt roll-off program. Uh-huh. That's a Lester roll-off program. It's, and uh, still open today. Are they, are they uh, bringing in teen girls? They are bringing in teen girls. Oh. It's a then they have their roll-off program. Exactly. Oh. That's the only other one I know, but I'm sure there are others out there somewhere. Yes, there are a lot out there that we don't know about yet. But I, I think as, as people listen to these podcasts, I've had people listen to the podcast and then they, they call me on, on my number and say, hey, I want to give my story. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. You know, just get the story out there, you know, because YouTube is, is worldwide. So everybody can listen to it. So exactly. It's, it's, I, I think it's going to uh, it's going to put some heat on some of these homes. Hopefully. I agree wholeheartedly because I feel like I, I don't want to speak for myself, but we in the survival community, I feel that we are just frustrated with the federal bill that we're trying to pass, that we're thinking about other ways of getting these places to close down. You know, we would love the federal bill to be passed, but what can we do now? And that is to bring attention to about the federal bill and get a hold of Adam Schiff. And then the second thing is just to spread awareness about what is happening today across our nation. Right. So, so tell me, tell me about your book. When did you write this book? I started this book in 2012 and it just launched 2020. I have a full-time job. Oh, so do I. And, (laughs) (laughs) or I had, I'm laid off now because of COVID-19. Right. Yes. Um, I just launched Pieces of Victory. It is an awareness on what took place at Victory Christian Academy located in Ramona, California. I was sent there in 1988, and I didn't commit a crime. I didn't do drugs, and I was on honor roll mention. And my parents locked me up in a reform school. What was the that reason? That was worse than juvenile hall. Um, I was sexually abused by okay. my uncle. And when I confided them with that story, they didn't believe me. And I was angry. And the first thing they thought, well, she must be on drugs. Oh, okay. How about giving me a drug test? <laughs> so the <laughs> anger that I was experiencing had nothing to do with them. It was me, and I was taking drugs. Well, a simple drug test would have sufficed, but sure. that was, you know, too easy for them. I guess. <laughs> so, you know, I guess they didn't want to really know what the problem was. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't dig too much into it, but they didn't give me a drug test, and off I went to Victory Christian Academy, and I was locked in there. They told me it was going to be a year. I ended up staying for eight months, but eight months is grueling when you're being tortured. Right. And even if I did commit a crime, no child deserves to be tortured. No. Tortured. Do we even do that to our criminals? No, we no. treat our criminals better than we treat these girls. Exactly. And that's so sad. And that is what's happening today. And I'm just, and although this happened in 1988, this is a problem today in our country. So here I am at Victory Christian Academy, and they made me delouse when I first entered into the so called program that was supposed to help girls. Uh huh. And I was made to shower, um, and my peers were there in the room. It was a staff member and another girl. And after that, they dragged me to the Get Right Room, which is a small closet. And I was there for eight hours. And the only reason why I came out so early is the mere fact that they asked me if I wanted to come out, and I said, no, I want to stay in. And that was my saving grace because I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay away from them. 
<laughs> and I wanted to decompress, <laughs> and I needed more time. And they said, well, we're taking you out since you like it in there so much. Oh. But it saved me because I didn't realize that girls were locked in there for days, weeks, and months at a time. And I could have easily gone back in there if I messed up. Even for getting a pencil for school was, were grounds for sending a child to the get right room. Have, have you ever, drag. Have, have you ever, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. have you ever looked back and said, you know what, now, now that I know what I know now, if I was to apply it back then, would I have just acted like I was completely nuts? Because, you know, usually a lot of, um, a lot of girls, if they're just complete, if they just act completely nuts, crazy they'll just let him go and say you know what we can't handle this kid let's just just get him out of this home <laughs> no that would make my life a living hell i've seen i've seen it i'll talk about that in a minute okay if you were completely nuts good plan though yeah. i like yeah. it yeah well, it, it won't work at victory christian academy it, it worked at, it, it worked at rebecca <laughs> we're, oh did it really with, oh you have dn yeah dn dossie dn dossie uh, she she really just gave them hell, and they just couldn't handle her. Yep. Wow. So. Wow, it does work. Hmm. <laughs> In some places. <laughs> well, go, Most go ahead. of the girls that were rebelling against what they were doing, uh huh. Um, it they would, it would be ten times worse for them. Ten times worse. Okay. I've seen girls handcuffed and duct taped to a chair. In fact, my movie trailer or my book trailer is a reenactment and that was filmed on the property of Victory Christian Academy in, R in Ramona, California. And we'll put that in the link it's below. It's a ministry. Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, you see a girl being duct taped. That actually happened. It, all of it's a reenactment of what went on in this place. And she was duct taped, handcuffed, duct taped on her mouth so she couldn't breathe and she was crying. She could have suffocated while girls were reading a Bible. They had their Bibles open, were pulling verses out and coinciding that uh -huh. with name calling, was bullying. So they were bullying her and um, having scripture to back it up, using scripture to back it up. I would say... 90% or 98% of what Mackenzie said was happening in Ramona, California. So yes, there was tackling, there were handcuffs, there was duct tape, um, there was room, uh, isolation for days, weeks, months at a time. There was also threatening to eat your own vomit. Right. So even if you don't eat your own vomit because you didn't throw up, let because if you threw up, you were forced to eat your own vomit, okay? Yeah. Let's say you had just that threat of, oh, my God, please don't eat my vomit. I was literally praying every day, please don't, don't allow me to throw up. I don't want to throw up. I can't throw up. I can't throw up. All day, that's all you thought about, just to survive. Right. That was playing in my head all the time. And I write about that in my book. Mm -hmm. um, my book is not all dark. <laughs> there is some light going on. So while I'm locked in the isolation, I reflect back of what my life was like before. Right. And it's more of a happy love story. So I go into a teenage love story. So it's half teenage love story and half awareness on child abuse. I look at it this way. A lot of people, you know, there's a, a lot of haters out there and they talk about how wonderful this place was well you know what that doesn't that it's it's just negates all that uh the child abuse i mean you could have no matter right. how many good times or you know pleasant times you had you introduce a child abuse into it that negates everything i agree with you and i also had a therapist tell me janine just because someone gives you a snickers bar doesn't mean they have a right to do what they, they did right. to you. Right. You know, yes. And you don't need to feel guilty for the because they did all these good things for you. And the thing is, a lot of these girls, um, some of them, like you and Mackenzie, have have uh, endured through it, 
and are you know telling your stories but there are some who desperately need help they're scared they have nightmares some of them have even right. committed suicide i mean it, it's, it's a lot yes a lot have committed yes. suicide there there is a big death toll of children dying in these camps because they were either killed by staff or they committed suicide inside the program or when they leave they still have the program inside their head and they can't take it anymore. So they take yeah. their life. Yes. And it's very hard to get acclimated back into society after experiencing something like that. Yes. I, I felt like an untouchable. This preacher made me feel that I was such an untouchable to society and to God, which is a double whammy. It, it's, it's horrible. It was the same guy, right? It was Michael Palmer. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. I always say a preacher from the darker dimension. <laughs> but they can look, anybody can look it up. He's in the news. Oh, yeah, he's, he's on public records. That's why. He's in Tampa Bay. Yeah, he's in the Tampa Bay Times. That's why I said it. I mean, I, I'm not going to say anybody's name. Right. It's not on public record. So, exactly. but yeah, Michael Palmer, I mean, he, he should be held accountable, I think, for, for what happened. Uh, that right. that it, one girl that horrible. that died, I think that was in Ramona, California, wasn't it? It wasn't. I was there. Yeah. It, her name is Carrie Dunn. Yeah. And remember, we weren't really allowed to talk to anyone, so I never really got to know who who she is or uh -huh. who she was in the program because we were all on pretty much separation, even though we were technically technically not on separation right. you were a loner in this place because it was designed that way and um she was always smiling throughout the program i remember that and you know, we were forced with labor it was forced slavery i feel um we weren't given any money and i would never volunteer my time for a ministry that's abusing girls I used to volunteer my time at a local church. Um, I, I refused to volunteer one minute of my time to an abusive ministry. And we were forced to do hard labor out in the field. So that's what she was doing. She was working on the church. She wasn't wearing a construction hat. And lumber fell on her and killed her. And I didn't see it. I didn't witness it. I'm only told this by the preacher. He called us all in to chapel, and we sat on the floor. I remember it as clear as day. Mm -hmm. And then he said that he starts crying, and he said that she died in his arms. She was just an empty shell. And then he threatened, and then I thought, oh, good, social services is going to come, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just thought, oh, my God, maybe this will get, you know, social services attention and they'll come in and rescue us all. And he, the minute that thought entered my mind, it exited right out when he said the following. Don't get any funny ideas, girls. <laughs> Her parents are fine with this and think that Carrie Dunn is with Jesus now and that is better than her being out on the streets. I'm telling you, if it was my child... I would have told them to shut that place down. Right. Right. Her parents could have saved us. Yes. You know, but maybe they just didn't know what was going on. But wouldn't you want to investigate? Yes, definitely. <laughs> wouldn't you want to find out? They were just so brainwashed. I feel that a lot of these parents are tricked and brainwashed into thinking that this is the best place to send your daughter. And they even uh, tell parents, if your daughter starts complaining about abuse that's happening in this place, he preps them. They're lying. They're making it up. Are you going to believe your daughter? She's a troublemaker. He Basically, have, that's why we're there. We're just troubled kids. He would have made He's a really good, that. he would have made a really good used car salesman. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he needs to be in prison. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, he needs to be. I think he needs to be charged. 
he needs to be charged for what what happened. Definitely. But, he has so many reports, and I'll have to tell you that I got a hold of social services, and I guess I'll say his name. He's in the newspaper. Sure. His name is Rick Peralto, uh-huh. and he helped me. Rick Peralto did help me, but something is definitely fishy. I think there's a lot of money going on here, and I'll just let the audience connect the dots. Right. But Rick Peralto did go to court for me. He took a 50-page deposition. He also talked to me on the phone, and he said, Janine, your story match another student that was sent there five years prior to you. And there was no Internet there back then. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know this girl at all. And she had the same story. There were numerous police reports. I know that for a fact. And yet he got a slap on the wrist. Not meeting up to fire code standards and not having a license. What about all all of the criminal acts? Does that not count? I, I, I guess... remember saying it, that to Rick Peralto and then he asked me, do you want to... Um, do you want to um, do a civil suit against him? And then I said, do I have to face him? Do I have to face him for that? And he said, yes. And I was so scared. I was 18, 19 years old at the time. I was so scared to, to face him. I wish I would have done it, but that's hindsight now. Yeah. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. Uh, you were going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey. He was basically just uh, getting free labor. It's you know, it's it's like what uh, prisons do. They'll they'll take people out there to either you know clean the roads or or sweep the sidewalks for all for free. So right. And the exactly. thing is, w- when you don't have skilled labor there, like construction workers, you're this. First of all, the safety's right out the door because. <laughs> You know, you, you girls don't know what you're doing, so to speak, because you've never done construction. You're 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 teenagers, you know. You're not right. supposed to be doing that stuff. But right, I guess to him and it without was without a hard hat. Right <laughs> to him, I guess it was just free labor, and it uh, cost somebody their life. And, we were uh, running that place. We were running that place. Who do, who was doing the cooking? We were doing the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry. Um, I was laundry helper, did you, and did go you, ahead. Did you have to? Uh, what did you have to wear? The red and blue dresses down to the below the knees. Below the knees, yes. Um, we had culottes. Oh, so, those abominable, those abominable culottes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did not. I will refuse to wear culottes. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Those are it's the. Just a Reminder of victory. Yes. It's awful. Rebecca Holm had them too. Just ugly, ugly, ugly things. <laughs> we didn't have the color coordinated shirts uh-huh. um, distinguishing hierarchy. Right. But we knew who was a helper, we knew who was on Buddy. Um, and then you know the drill on Buddy, three feet behind another student who is ordering you around and telling you the rules. And the girls were abusing other girls. They were, I want to say it was almost like being in another country with a dictator and you're in the middle of a war and you have to kill the enemy and if you don't do it, or torture the enemy and if you don't do it, they'll kill your family. I feel that that is the perfect analogy of it. They did it for their own survival. Right. They did it for their own survival. Yes. They didn't want to be bullied um, because now you're a target. You're a target if you're not a higher up. If you're a higher up, um, you know, you're not picked on 24 hours a day. Can you imagine, you know, being punished 24 hours a day or emotionally abused? 24 hours a day. You get more privileges. That's what it was like. Yes. Right. Yeah. More privileges. You're still in a cage, but it's a bigger cage. And it kind of makes you wonder, Janine, how many of those girls that did that 
now, now that they're older, are just kicking right. themselves and saying, wow, I wish I had never done that. I wish I could get a hold of these girls and just tell them I'm sorry. Right. Well, now they're living with guilt. So yes. There's guilt. Um, there's shame. They're dealing with a lot. They're taking on that responsibility, and which is understandable. But it's a shame that it's a crime, it's criminal that a, an adult would put a child through something like that. Yeah, it's aw- it's awful. I mean, it it's must awful. it must haunt them. You know, I mean, maybe not all of them. Maybe some of them were pretty sinister, <laughs> but I'm sure some were just. Like I said, did it to survive and not get right. beat or, or – and just now it's just like, man, I wish I could just get a hold of so-and-so and just tell her I am so right. sorry for what I did. And maybe they can't and it just it, – it, it, like you said, they're riddled with guilt. And that's – Eats that's, them up. It eats them up, yes. And that's <laughs> – And they definitely need me for that. It's, it's awful. Um, the other thing is uh, another part of um, – another side of that spectrum is think about how we had to suppress everything. We couldn't talk about our friends. We couldn't talk about music or movies. We had to shove everything down and talk about the Bible and talk about how God is working in our life, which is great. You know, that's fine. But when you can't talk about feelings and you can't talk about maybe issues with your parents, and try to work out real things, um, real, really, you know, work on real relationships, mm-hmm. um, and be true to yourself, um, or talk about the abuse that's happening. We couldn't talk about that. We, we couldn't talk about anything. And um, even if it was a Christian friend and it was positive, we couldn't talk about that. So think about all that we had to suppress. And even if we were, even the fact that we were picked on or bullied in the school, we couldn't voice that. Think about how much rage that yeah. these girls had by going through the program. And when they make it to, you know, a different hierarchy, now they have the chance to vent, right? to let it out. And sometimes a lot of these girls, uh, they hide, you know, they hide all this stuff. They suppress it, like you said. And the only way they can make it go away is through alcohol, through drugs, through whatever, you know. And self-medicating. And yes, mm-hmm. they self-medicate, and it just it just makes it worse. It makes it worse. So, and some of them. I agree. I agree. A lot of these girls that I've talked to have have been in therapy, which which is a good thing. But I mean, they wouldn't have to be if they didn't have to go through this, you know. Exactly, and it's important for parents to listen to this if they're especially if they're contemplating sending their child there yes why even take a risk that these are the repercussions Cause and because like, like i said back in the relationship will be ruined right back in like i said back in the 80s there was no internet there was no way of 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 venting these people or vetting these people out unless there was a friend that said oh well these people are really good i mean they're really nice and it's a great place that's the only way it was word of mouth is what it was. Right. You know, so, exactly. and their friends told them it was good. So they thought it was good. And, and I, I don't, I don't begrudge them that. I mean, I don't, I don't blame them for it, but you know, they, it, it was different back then. And a lot of these, it's, gr- it's definitely a lot of networking. Right. And, and, and a lot, go ahead. and these, I mean, and uh, it was different back then. So, I mean, now, like I said, they don't have an excuse. There's so much information out there, they don't have the excuse to say, well, I didn't know what was going on. Okay. There's plenty of information to you for you to, to research and make a, the right decision. So. We even had someone who went through the school for four years. Now, that's four years of brainwashing. Yeah. And she was saying, nothing ever happened. These are all lies. And you know she's telling other parents, this is the best thing that ever happened. And send your child there, you know, to this place. It really turned my life around. And um, that's 
scary. And we don't really know, is that really somebody who went to the school or is that staff? Yeah. I kind of wonder about that. Or is it just somebody who's a spokesman was, for the for the home, you know? Right. A plant. Part, yeah. Right. Somebody who is I hate being to be paid. paranoid, but right. these people are crazy. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, I, I have learned through the years, especially with, and, you know, I, I, I'm not a Christian. I, I'll, I'll just put it out there. I'm not a Christian. I don't go to church. Uh, the 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 Baptists, the roll-off homes, have just left a bad taste in my mouth. But every time I, I hear a why. every time I hear a Christian or somebody who's talking about the home say, "Oh, this place is wonderful," immediately, I I am suspicious. Immediately, right, <laughs> right. You can't help but be. I, I, I exactly. I have PTSD. In you know when someone says. This is the best thing that ever happened to me because now you're calling me a liar. Right. And that's what they called us in this place. Yeah. You're a liar. You're a whore. You're a Jezebel over and over and over again. And, you know, it just triggers, it's triggers to trauma with me. How was now. it, how was it Christ-like to tell people they're whores? It just bothers I my never mind heard sometimes. Of such I've never heard of such a thing, and it's a good thing that I was exposed to another congregation before. But but it doesn't diminish what went on in this place. Oh well, yeah, it it just means I was exposed, and then I came into this place, and I thought, what the hell is going on here? Doesn't anyone think that this is crazy? And all of the girls had to be on this beat to the same drum. It was like walking into the twilight zone. I kid you not. And that's what brainwashing is. When you can't speak your mind, not one girl would say, this is horrible. What they're doing is horrible. This is not Christ-like. I could not go back to my dorm and say, hey, don't you think this is a little out of whack? Yeah. Um, this is not Christ-like. I've never seen a preacher talk about this, especially in a sermon. <laughs> I've never heard a preacher Say it, say anything negative like this before about another human being. It it was a different kind of world. But it when was, but when okay. they they were in church, it was nothing but nice. And and, and the thing is, I noticed that a lot of uh, did, did you have to go to church? Every, Actually, chapel twice a day. Twice and a the day. Chapel twice a day was a witch trial. It was, you're a Jezebel, Jezebel, you're a whore, you're a home wrecker, and the list went on. You're a druggie. Right. In, in spite of the fact, if you did it or not, it <laughs> didn't matter, and I didn't, by the way. Um, you start to believe this. Oh, right. It was classical conditioning, but on the Sunday sermons, they were different. Whenever there were parents, because that's when the parents came to visit their children, and it uh -huh. was once a month. It was first three months. And then it was once every month. This is in Ramona. I'm speaking for Ramona. So once it was one time after three months. So uh, you don't see your parents for three months. And then it was once every month after that. And you are not allowed to leave the compound at all. You can't get out. There was a 12-foot fence and barbed wire. I was locked in. And surveillance cameras. Yes, I read about that. It used to be an F, uh, some sort of facility for the FBI or something like that? or Yeah, it was an old FBI facility. Yes. That's exactly it. And after seven months, you can get off the property. But that's like winning the lotto ticket and then having <laughs> to give your money back. That's what that felt like. Who the hell wants <laughs> to get out of the compound? And then to have my parents send me back in was torturous. I never once on my outside visits, this is how brainwashed I was and how afraid I was. I didn't want to say anything to my parents about child abuse in there. Nothing. If I did and they went back, because I knew that they would go back. Any parent would mm -hmm. automatically oh, go yeah. back or have a discussion with them, right? Yes. Um, but my parents thought I was a liar. They thought I was lying about sexual abuse. Do you think I was going to say anything to them about it? No. But what happened was on the way back of my seventh month visit, which was my only outdoor visit, mm -hmm. I was crying in hysterics, 
crying. I was hysterically crying. I couldn't control it. And no one did anything. They just sent me back. Both of my parents took me right back in there. They never said, are you okay? What's happening? What is happening in there? Why are you crying? Nope. Nothing. And I'm, I was right back in there. They took me out after eight months, though. Well, I don't know if you want to get into that now. or Sure, do you want to sure. Get... Okay. So on eight months, you're supposed to be locked in there for a year, but they took me out early, and none of the girls knew um, that I was going to be leaving. Uh, another staff pulled me aside. I was vacuuming and took me into my dorm, and I thought, oh, my God, is a sock out of place? Because we would get demerit if right. a sock or something was out of place. I thought I was going to get going to get punished for something. And she said, go ahead and open your drawer. And then I opened the drawer, and I thought, oh, my God, what did I do? And she said, your parents are here to pick you up. And I thought I was dreaming it. And I collected all of my things. I met my parents. And the first thing my father said is, we took you out early because it's Easter and we forgive you. The prodigal, son, uh, the prodigal daughter returns. returns. Trying to use that prodigal son analogy <laughs> as a comparison. Oh. Um, it took everything in me not to say anything or, you know, um, react to, to that. I thought he would take me back to victory. If I if I said anything, I said anything, yeah. So I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I would literally jump out of the car if they ever tried to take me back. And I'm not joking. I would jump out of the car. That's how bad it was in this place. I guess it would be better to go to a, a mental institution than it would be to go to that place. Because even I mean, even in a mental institution, you're treated better. <laughs> you know. Yes, and you're allowed a phone call. Right. My and goodness, this girl's crazy. We better take her to the insane asylum. Well, it's a lot better. <laughs> it, <laughs> they take care of you It definitely is. In fact, um, when my parents didn't believe me about the sexual abuse, it was really bad at home. It was just very abusive on an emotional level. And I, I wanted to go... I wanted to go um, volunteer myself into a mental facility, uh-huh. and I did, and I was allowed a phone call, I was allowed a visitor, and I had therapy. So Good. there, it is, it is, um, you know, there are freedoms in there. Right. You know, they treat you like a human being in there. And I don't want to say all mental facilities are like that. No. I mean, I'm only speaking from my experience. I had more rights. You know, I don't know what goes on in every facility. But like you said, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an institution that's state-run, you at least get a phone call. You get three square meals a day. Right. They treat you better than they did at, at um, the home. Victory Christian Academy. Yeah, yes. exactly. I yes. agree. So anything's better than that. <laughs> Anything was better than that. Yes. Out of all my experiences in life, I would have to say Victory Christian Academy was the worst experience of my life. Now, as far as and I've had a hard and I've had a hard life, and that was the worst. Now, as far as discipline, there was a lot of paddling going on. I didn't see anyone getting hit at Victory Christian Academy in Ramona. Okay. I heard, you heard screaming definitely throughout your stay there. Um, We had to keep our eyes to ourselves. If another girl was being punished, just just like Mackenzie's story, Mm -hmm. you had to keep your eyes to yourself and you couldn't look at anybody else. There was um, the force feeding of a girl and that is on my trailer. She didn't want to eat her food. She just arrived at the home. And, you know, you're nervous when you first get there. Right. I didn't want to eat. And you're just a bundle of nerves and you're crying. And she just didn't want to eat. And she said, I'm going to throw up. And they said, if you throw up, we're going to make you eat it. And that was the first time I heard that. 
Oh. And that's when I, I was new to the program at that point. <laughs> okay. And I'm hearing this going on. And another staff said, I have an idea to the preacher from a darker dimension. I'm going to go get a funnel from the kitchen and let's blend her dinner in a blender and put it down the funnel and force feed her. And that's what they did. And you can hear her gagging and they were threatening to, to make her eat her own vomit. God. I can hear this. And that was playing in my head the whole time I was staying there because I, I found out my boyfriend had a, I had a girlfriend while I was in there after three months. That was my first visit. And my mm -hmm. mother whispers to me, your boyfriend has a girlfriend and he's happy. And she took it upon herself to tell me that wonderful news in my ear, knowing that we weren't allowed to talk about boys, right? Well, right. we're not supposed to talk about boys. Why are you telling me this? You know, if you want to whisper something in my ear, why don't you give... Give me a, some good news. Right. Say I love you. Say something <laughs> like that, you know. Boyfriend. Right. You know what I'm saying? But no, nope, that wasn't the case. And I was, I was sick. Like, I wanted to vomit. And that's when it really started getting bad because I knew what the repercussions were. I was praying every night, please, I don't want to vomit. They're going to make me eat my own vomit. It's, it's scary. So... Whether or not they ate, they made me do that or not. Right. I want to emphasize on the mental abuse of it all, yeah. of having that over your head every day in that place. And and a lot of so, em embarrassing things you had to do. I mean, I talked to a girl named Cindy who was with the Bethesda home, attended there, and she had to strip be strip searched in front of her, in front of her peers. Um, she even said that. They would come in unannounced, turn on the light, make you lift your fingers, your two fingers up in the air so they can smell it to see if you've been playing with yourself. Oh, that's awful. That is that's awful. awful. What is they wrong with you people? Bethany, New Bethany, too. New Bethany is also a roll-off school. They have to the house. Um, those are all roll-off schools. Yes. And I know it's demented. That's disgusting. It, the things that they would do. It was almost like they were getting inside of your head. Or getting the rocks off, that? one of the two. Right, yeah, that too. But can you imagine where you feel like you can't even think in your head about a boy or the outside world? Otherwise, it's the lust of the flesh. Right. But yet they would do something like that. Why even have that as a thought process? <laughs> I, I, you're right. I just feel that they're just perverted. And like you said, wasn't sexual abuse going on in that place? They were raping the girls? The uh, home that you're talking about right now? Bethesda, or, Bethesda or no? home? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think she mentioned anything about that. But They did that in New Bethany, and there was a serial rapist, rapist yeah. the pastor that was running the place. Uh, he's dead, I'll say yeah. it. Max Ford. Yeah. He didn't get one repercussion for what he did, and he was a serial rapist, and I'm going to get angry right now. Right. Because he didn't even get indicted. He didn't even get indicted, and there were numerous reports. And and then one week later, he died. Well, I hope but it was, he would I do hope... the same thing to the girls, and he was raping them, and, and having other pastors from other churches come in and do the same thing, because you know what? These girls are nothing, according to them. Right. We're nothing. We were just untouchable, and we were whores. So they wanted to do whatever they wanted with and, us. And I hope he died a horrible death. So, yes, I mean, well, it, it, if you it believe takes, in the afterlife, I uh, feel sorry for him. <laughs> yes, but I, I mean, like I said, but, when when Cindy told me that, I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Only a pervert would do something like that. All right, girls, exactly. come up. Put your fingers up. Let me smell them. I mean, That's come on. Disgusting. Disgusting. That's exactly. Disgusting. Beyond disgusting. Don't, I don't know if you heard this from girls before, but these preachers were raping them, and even in my um, place, they would do the same thing. They made sure women knew that 
if they were ever raped, it was their fault. And they don't call it rape. The smell of a woman, the way she dressed, her demeanor, everything, and he would go back to Genesis. And he would point scripture out, pulling that out, that we were the temptress. Oh, we're yeah. the temptress? You can, so it's our fault? You, you can can't make, think for yourself? You can make scripture can. mean anything you want. You can twist oh, sure. it around, they turn can. it around, and, and make it in your favor. That's what I they called do. it the twisted scriptures in, in my book, Pieces of Victory. It uh, was the twisted scriptures because that's what they were doing. They oh, were sure. taking the word of God and really according to their liking to get away with rape. That's sad. And not only that, think about the psychological damage to those girls that are raped, um, blaming themselves. They already been prepped to blame themselves. And then after the rape, what do you think's going on? They're still hearing those sermons. Yeah. It's awful. It's awful. And a lot of these girls are already broken from the abuse. Exactly. The mental abuse, right. the physical abuse, and then to rape them, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's. And a lot of these girls are coming from homes that are abusive. Right. And then they're in, they're thrown into, I think that could be a, another factor that why some girls think that this is the best thing that ever happened to them because they were abused in their home and maybe their home life was worse. And this was maybe a picnic compared to it, but it's right. still abuse, but they're not acknowledging that it's abuse. Because they're comparing it to right. other abuse. Anything's better than home, <laughs> you know. Anything's better than yes. home. Yes. Or these people paid attention to me. These people made me a helper. You know, I'm a helper. I'm not. They're not bullying me. So because I'm out of the line of fire and I'm on their good list, it's a different. It's it's conditioned love. And you can pretty much tell the 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 so-called ass kissers. You know these girls that are like willing to do, <laughs> willing to do anything. Okay, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, whatever. And and okay, these people, these girls are complying. Okay, we're gonna make them a helper. We know that they're gonna, they're gonna do what we tell them to do. And of course, like right. you said, um, to uh, for their own survival, they had to abuse the girls too. So, right. and I, I don't blame them. It wasn't them. It was just right. the fact that they were mentally, con abuse. yes, they were mentally right. conditioned. Their minds were That's moldable. They were, their, their, their minds were broken. So. I said in an interview, these people took our souls. I feel that the duration while I was at Victory Christian Academy, I yeah. didn't have a soul. It's identity, and you can't even think how you want to think or breathe how you want to breathe or have passion and it is all wiped out from under you, in essence, they took your soul. Yeah. And it's, you have an identity crisis when you get out of that place. I'm not joking. And what happened That's to what them? That's what happened to me. What happened to them? Nothing. They went to another state and started all over again. Right. Abusing more. Abusing more. And... The, pre uh, the preacher from a darker dimension, I keep saying that because I don't <laughs> think he deserves his name out there. I don't even want to mention his name. Okay. We all know who um, you're talking but, about. <laughs> yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> For more years, using girls. But if we yeah. had oversight, none of that would have happened. If we had that federal bill, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have happened. Now there was there or was. Or it would have been harder for him. <clears throat> There was a rape of a girl. That uh, the creature from another dimension uh, <laughs> didn't didn't get um, convicted for. I can't yes, remember. It's I, Ramirez. 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 Yes. Uh huh. Yes. And she is there. Ramirez, and he raped her and then went to the parents he was in love with her but we don't want to call it in love with her but according to him he was in love with her went to the parents and was willing to pay twenty five thousand dollars for her and he was still he was married. going to buy their daughter i don't know if he was at the time 
I, I really don't know. We'll have to read that article. We read that article. Maybe we uh-huh. can. I read the I read the article. Somehow, there was an article out there, and it said that he was still married, but I don't know. I'll, I'll have oh, wow. to reread it too. Maybe I'm I'm mistaken, but maybe not. <laughs> right, and we whether or not he was what he's doing is criminal, of course. Yeah. But we'll attach. I can attach that to when I post this podcast. I'll attach it. I'll uh-huh. attach the article on okay. Rebecca Ramirez. Yeah, well, I'll put that in the description also. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, is he still alive? He's still you know? alive as far as I know. Yeah, okay. as far as I know, he is. His wife had passed, oh. but he's still alive. He she needs w- to be prosecuted for this. Oh. He really does. It's never too late. Well, it's, statute you know, of limitations, as far as the Ramirez case, is, it's, it's already passed. I know and, that there are some states. Um, Louisiana, where it was 30 years or something to that effect. Does that ring a bell to you? Because I was a rape advocate for Jennifer Halter, and she reported it years, years later. And the statutory, um, I'm sorry, the statute of limitations um, is different in the state of Louisiana. So I guess it's different in each state. I'm curious to know what it is in Florida. Yeah, but. I don't have to have to have to do some research on that. But I know there's, like in Texas, the statute of limitations is is I think seven years. But the the reason why they have a statute of limitations is because you know people sometimes will forget details. Some people die, and you know of course everybody, no matter if you're a pervert or not, everybody's entitled to a fair trial. <laughs> Right. Either, whether we think they deserve it or not, they're still entitled to a, a fair trial. So if you have people that, you know, after seven years, I mean, can you remember everything that happened seven years ago? You know what I mean? So, right. But that's why they have a, the, know, a statute of limitations. The statute of limitations. Right. But the other side of the spectrum is a lot of survivors, including myself, and I wasn't raped in this reform school. I was raped by a family member prior to the school. Right. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is I was so afraid to, I'm using myself as an example, although Mm -hmm. it wasn't rape from the school, I was so terrified of this preacher that I didn't even want to um, test. I, I didn't, I didn't want to give my testimony in court in front of him. I didn't want to see him. I was terrified. And maybe years later, stronger. And you know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm thinking that's why other survivors come forth later, because they feel stronger to do it. Right. As you get older, you get wiser, you get, you get, uh, you know, you get stronger. Yes. Right. So, but, you know, maybe, uh, maybe he'll do it again. And maybe he might get convicted this time. We can only hope. What I'm curious to know is how many other girls he did that to that didn't come forward. Right. Right. How many? There could be a lot. How many? How many girls did he stare at? I mean, I don't know if there was, you said there wasn't any, you didn't know if there was any paddling going on, but I know there were some places where they would make the girls take off their panties when they, when they. He would look us up and down all the time, but naively when I was. 16, I thought he's looking at our souls, that he's trying to inspect, he's like he's doing the stare down. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, do, I don't doing, think... You're looking me up and down and scanning to see if, because I'm a problem child, but he would do it to every girl that was coming in. He would do this look I don't, up and down. I don't think it was your soul we he was looking at. No, no, I don't think he was. So, well... <laughs> I was interpreting it because he made us feel that we were just untouchable and unworthy of God. So at that point, I just felt, I just felt, I felt naked. But in that regard, I felt dirty, shameful, unfit to God, all those things that he would say on the pulpit about us, that we were heathens. He would call us heathens. Right. We were unright, 
we were not right with God. What, cause, because we broke a rule? Because we forgot our pencil? <laughs> you know, we're not right with God? I mean, they were stupid rules that we had to, to follow if our nails weren't short enough. So I, I pretty much clipped my nails so far because I have long nail beds. Right. I would make my I would make my skin bleed because I, I didn't want to get a demerit. Demerits. Yes, I was going to ask you that. They went on the demerit system. We were on the demerit yeah. system. So those are lines. And yes. it would be, I would give you an example. How about um, if you wanted to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night? You have to wake up your helper, and they have to shut the alarm system down. You can't just walk out and go to the bathroom, walk to the bathroom. You have yeah. to have them shut the alarm off and take you to the bathroom, but you get punished for that. I will not wake up a helper in the middle of the night to take me to the bathroom 500 times. And if you're a helper, it's a, you know, if you're a helper and you make a mistake, let's say I'm a helper mm -hmm. and I have to shut the alarm off and take myself to the bathroom, I would write myself a demerit for a thousand lines because I'm a helper. I get it twice as bad. Wow. Uh, I don't know. These, this, it's, these homes are just, something's got to be done. Like you said, that, is it just in California where they have that legislation that's dead in the water? No, it is a federal bill. A federal yeah. bill. So it, Oh, that's right. You did say federal bill. Yes. We to pass. It's okay. It's okay. I, because I emphasize that George Miller is from California and Adam Schiff. That's okay. probably why you thought that. But yes, it is a federal bill that we were trying to pass. But I, I say it's dead in the water. They need to resurrect it, reintroduce it. You know, these are my choice of words. Right. Um, I think the more awareness that we have out there and the more this goes viral, um, the more people will contact you know, th their representative and Adam Schiff. So this is a good thing. There's been a lot of positive views on, on the McKinsey story. So people are, like I said, people are, are looking at it and watching it. So hopefully it, it, we get more views and, and, and uh, people are aware and they could probably resurrect that bill again. We can only hope. Right, exactly. In so. fact, we should send all of those videos to Adam Schiff. <laughs> Here you go, Adam Schiff. <laughs> or we could just send them the, the links and say, hey, look at these. These are the girls that were right. at that exactly. home. You know. I agree. So maybe, maybe we can They'll do have that. enough to keep them busy for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm being comical, but it's really, it's really sad. It's yeah. sad that I have a lineup right now. It's sad that you have a lineup right now. It's good for awareness, don't get me wrong, yes. but it's sad how many survivors there are. I'm going to interview someone tomorrow. Her name is Carrie Jean or Carly Jean, and she's a survivor of the Circle of Hope. She got out three years ago. Wow. And she was raped inside the Circle of Hope, and I'm going to interview her tomorrow, and I'm going to have her parents call in, too. Her parents are supporting her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that that's tomorrow, but three years, that was three years ago. That means this is happening today. It's still going on. And I, you know about Rachel Kelso, I'm sure, because you're in this circle. Yes? No, I don't, actually. Oh, okay. I have to tell you about Rachel Kelso. Go ahead. So Rachel Kelso is inside the circle of hope. She's special needs, and she is 30-something years old. So she's been there, I want to say, for over a decade, maybe going on 15 years, right? Uh -huh. They're abusing her. She's been there for life. So she was adopted, and her adopted parents dropped her off at the Circle of Hope. So they're in the custody of the people that are running the Circle of Hope. Uh -huh. And they are abusing the girls. They're uh -huh. uh, Rachel Kelso, who's special needs. And it's so sad. It's so sad that this goes on and America just turns a blind eye. And I would like everyone to hashtag where is Rachel Kelso and hashtag expose COH, which is Circle of Hope.
And this is the Circle of Hope Girls Ranch that's in Missouri, still open today. Rachel Kelso, you said? Rachel Kelso, and you can look up Amanda Householder uh -huh. and all of her information. She is talking about Rachel Kelso okay. and all of her TikToks, YouTubes, Facebook. In Facebook, she goes by a different name. Okay. Is she out of the home now? I'll give you. Or is she still um, there? Amanda Amanda Householder is out of the home, but Rachel Kelso, is still we're trying there. to save her. She's right. still there. Okay. Special needs, 30, I think she's 30 or 31 years old, and she's still there. She can't come out. Someone needs to get her out of that compound. And we don't know if she's being sexually abused or not. I'm only speculating. Right. I, I mean, I don't want to accuse anyone if I, didn't, if I don't know if she's right. being sexually abused. But when you hear girl after girl after girl, and I'm interviewing Carly tomorrow, and she mm. was raped. And how do we know what's going on with her? I'm just saying, how do we know? Right. That's all I'm saying. It, it's gotten to the point, Janine, where when someone says, you know, this person was raped at this Christian, doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me anymore. It, it used to be like, oh my goodness. Now just like, oh, okay. Don't surprise. Not at all. It, it, it's, it's just breeding from, ground right. for it's, it's, it's something all, like that. And it's so easy to disguise it until they're caught. But it's so easy to disguise it because people put their faith in other people. And that's the thing. You're putting your faith in a person. Right. It's almost like it's expected. You know what I mean? I mean, every time you hear about a, a, a Christian, Christian, I put that in quotes, home, it's always some report of sexual abuse. It's just, it's like it's expected. I mean, it's sad. It is sad. And I'm not trying bash christianity i am not trying to bash christianity at all well no it's not the These it's it's not it's it's those not monsters right it's not the congregation <laughs> at the church it's those freaking monsters out there that are leading the church right. that are running right. these homes that are doing it all under the disguise of religion right they're taking on the flag of religion and that's desp despicable yes it that. is Extremely despicable. And as a Christian, as a Christian, Christians should be angry at that. Christians should be supporting us. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Are, are there are there some Christians uh, that are supporting you, or are they still I reluctant to believe you? Support. I have some that think I'm a Christian basher, no. but I have some that that think that oh my gosh, this is horrible and it needs to be exposed. And I'll give mm -hmm. you an example, Jerry. Jerry Taylor, who's my filmmaker, he's Christian. And you know what he did for me? I'll tell you. What? He heard one story, and that was the one that I did with John Hightower. And it was for Pieces of Victory. Mm -hmm. But he was interviewing me. Hightower was interviewing me, and I'll send that over to you. He filmed it, and he heard the story, and he was just, oh my, he was just um, flabbergasted that this is happening in America. He was in shock. And after he heard that, I told him that I was thinking about having a TV show. Um, how much are you going to charge me for it? And he said, you know what, Janine? I'll do it for free as a donation. Wow. Because I believe in the cause. I believe in the cause. Isn't that awesome? And yes. then I had another Christian TV show, Teen TV. And his name, name is Dale Davidson. Dale uh, Davidson. And he interviewed me. And he interviewed... Another Rebecca Home for Girls, which is New Bethany, the girls there, uh -huh. and he supported all of us, supported all of us. In fact, he gave a donation um, when I was Jennifer Halter's rape advocate. Uh -huh. um, he gave a donation to have us fly over there, to have us fly to Louisiana so we could report the rape. That's awesome. He is just an amazing human being. Dale Davidson, King TV, Jerry Taylor. Um, there's another Christian that's supporting me. Um, his name is Jim Walker, Jim Walker on perspectives. And I'll send you all of those videos sure. too, if you'd like. Or just send but me the links. Also we'll put it, me too. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you the links. Send the links exactly. and we can put it in the description. 
But yes, it's great that a lot of these Christians are are supporting you. But then, of course, you have those Christians that are are so. What's the word I'm looking for? There's not brainwashed, but they're so blinded right. by, by these people. It's just they could that never. They could never do anything like that. I think you're. I think you're right. lying. You know exactly. And most of and them. It's so sad. Yes. It's sad, but they're out there, and I think they just think it's an attack on Christianity. Maybe they've heard it so much they right. think it's an attack. And I'm not trying to defend them, mm-hmm. but if you truly knew who I was as a person, and if you really dug deep, you would know I'm not Christian bashing. <laughs> Do you know what I'm right. saying? Well, yes, I'm yes. monster bashing. Yeah. Well, we're we're so, not out. See, we're not out to, to bash Christians. That's the thing. I've, that's what I tell right. these girls. We're not out to bash them. We're just out to right. expose the people who are we're, who are saying one thing and doing another. We're exposing the truth, and isn't exactly. that what Christianity is about? The truth. It's right. about the truth. Yes. You know, I've I've always heard. You know, like I said, I've heard a lot of sermons on Lester Olaf, and, and what the sad part is. If you go, there's a there's a website called rolloff.org, and you can listen to 24 hours of this man. Oh no! Yes. You know that was part of our punishment. So when we yes. were locked up, I forgot to tell you this. <laughs> when we were locked up in the get right room, yes, which was a small closet, by the way, and it was an isolation for days. Let me reiterate: days, weeks, months at a time. You were listening to Lester Roloff yes. over and over and oh, 24 seven. Right, twenty four seven, and it's not. It's abusive sermons. They're not fluffy sermons. No, they're not. They're not fluffy. They're, they're abusive, and they're blaming women for rape. They are blaming women for rape. Yes, I've actually in these sermons. I've heard a lot of them, and he's talking about how you know women you shouldn't dress provocatively because then you just cause men to lust after you. And yeah, I, I've heard it. So, um, I, personally, I don't think that Roloff ever. Um, knew about what was going on, if there was any sexual abuse going on in the hopes. I don't think he knew about it, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Like I said, he was a true believer. King James all the way, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> he, he didn't seem like the kind I heard of, that is the best, um, the best translation is King James. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah, well, but I... I don't, I'm away from all the organizations. No organizations for me. I have my spirituality and whatever that is, mm-hmm. that's between myself. That's, that's my personal belief system. And I believe in the freedom of choice and the freedom to believe what you want to believe. You know, yes. I just, I don't have faith in people. I've kept spirituality, but I've lost my faith. Mm-hmm. I hate to say it in humanity. Um, and I don't want to be negative about humans, but they are, uh, it's just awful. And lately I've just been very uh, bonding with survivors and they're trying to get these places closed down. And, and when I refer to lost my faith in humans, I'm talking about these monsters that are right. running these places. I recently, I recently did a podcast with a, a guy that I knew who uh, was in a, a uh, a music band and uh, it was a christian band and and the guy who was leading it was a self-proclaimed christian and uh, he ended up getting convicted for uh assault uh sexually assaulting boys you know so <laughs> it doesn't surprise me not at all you know so it's i don't know like i said the, these homes need I to be I feel like it's the per- it's the perfect place to to um, get someone who is vulnerable um, or get gain trust, you're gaining a lot of people's trust right. because a lot of people trust other Christians um, with fellowshipping, and they think, well, he's a Christian. What could go wrong? But now you're putting yeah. your faith in humans, and, and if, that's not where your faith. And then, of be. course, then of course, you scare them so badly. When you, if you do rape them, then you could say, if you say anything, you know, you're going to be in trouble. And of course, they're so scared that they don't say anything. You know what I mean? So it's perfect. It's these guys who, right. are, who are running these homes or are, are raping these girls. 
it's 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 the perfect ground for them to do this stuff. Right. It's definitely breeding ground. Yes. For rape. With actually, when you think about it, like with with uh, the creature from the lagoon there, um, he doesn't get any repercussions. <laughs> so right. he got away scot free. Exactly. Exactly. So we're talking about, I'll go ahead and say it, Palmer running Victory Christian Academy and also Max, um, who is running New Bethany. He was, Mac Ford was a serial rapist, a serial rapist, and he got away with yeah. that. And other preachers. There were other staff sure. and Max, preachers. Max who? I'm sorry? Mac Ford. Mac okay. Ford. And also okay. it was, there was money exchanged, oh. by the way. So he, in the conversion therapies with James Swift, when you watch The Haunted, uh-huh. season two, third one down, Cult of Torture, he talks about how he could hear them. Make, um, and maybe it was during when we were filming in L.A. Um, I, I could only see that a couple of times on Netflix, but because it's so horrifying, it's horrible that this actually happened to a human being. Right. It makes me so upset thinking about it. But they, he could hear them um, paying for, pay, you know, money exchanged, you know, of how much they were going to pay football players, how they were going to pay money to rape him. It's just, so not only was he collecting money from the parents, this preacher, and it costs about $25,000 to send their kid there to a conversion therapy, what, to pray the gay away, to yeah. convert them over to straight. That's awful. And then, um, then he was collecting money on the back end, on uh, yeah. and politicians probably. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. Right. I'll leave it out. Everybody that's, can connect the dots. That, that's but. another story altogether. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Janine, this was very informative. I want to thank you for coming on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. And if you are considering sending your child to a lockdown residential program, boot camp for kids, yes. conversion therapies, um, wilderness camps, if you have a 1% chance that this might happen to your kids, why would you even take that risk? There are other alternatives. You can visit sia-now.org. Again, sia-now.org or helpforteens.org, which is James Swift. He is helping kids get off the street that have been kicked out for being gay. Helpforteens.org. Right. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Send me those links and uh, we'll put them on the description. Um, Yes. I have a lot of links to send you. (laughs) Yes. Send me, I'll I'll put them in the description. Send me all the links. If all the links you you have, send them to me. I will put them in the description below. So, and of course, uh, if uh, you want to know more about Janine's story, Go to her website. Was it JanineMiller.com? Is that yes. Re- yes, Janine. It's easier to remember pieces at Victory.com because I have a oh, redirect. Okay. Um, because my name is spelled uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's pieces of victory. So pieces of victory.com. Yes, and buy her book, Pieces of Victory. I think I'm going to go Aww. on the website and buy that as well. Okay, I'm, you've got <laughs> oh, me. Oh, that is so sweet. You got me very interested in it, so I'm going to go to your site and and buy it can you handle a love story <laughs> oh yes actually you know you know what i think you should do uh with this book is uh you should make it also into an audio book because there's a lot of people out there yes. who are driving in their cars you know who can't read or people who are working like when i'm working i i can't read a book so i i put on my headphones and i listen to audiobooks so I think maybe it's definitely in the making. Oh, it is. Okay. I am getting at, yes, it's in the making. It's my next project. So after COVID-19, <laughs> when I can get back on my feet and I get back to work and right. I start paying, then I can hire the actors that I hired in LA uh-huh. for my short film. I'm going to have them participate in the audiobook. Yes. I already have a couple lined up right now that say they would like to. That would be awesome. Valerie. Valerie Rose is one of them. She has a beautiful voice. So she's the one that played me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, that would be that would be great. Because, like I said, not only can they read it, they can also listen to it. If, if you know, even even if if if, if it, it, you get reach a whole spectrum of people too. People who are blind, who can't read, they can also 
listen to it, you know, so it's, you're right. reaching other, exactly. other, other people. So anyway, yes, thank many you. Many uh, platforms. Yes, sure. many platforms for sure. Yes. All right, uh, Janine, stay on the line real quick. I'm going to end this podcast, okay? Just a moment. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I want to thank everybody for listening today. If you would like to know more about Janine Miller's continued journey in raising awareness for the abuse in these homes, you can go to her website and her YouTube channel, which will be in the description below. If you would like to know more about her time there, you can also purchase her book, Pieces of Victory, which I highly recommend. We need to raise awareness for these girls and boys that are, to this day, being abused in these reformatories. These inhuman, sadistic, perverted monsters need to be stopped and prosecuted for their crimes of abuse, rape, torture, and in some cases, death. In Dave Pelzer's book, A Child Called It, he says, Childhood should be carefree, playing in the sun, not live in a nightmare in the darkness of the soul. The late great Christopher Hitchens said, to terrify children with the image of hell, to consider women an inferior creation, is that good for the world? I don't think so. For the Hammer Podcast, I'm Jason. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other.